Good morning, and welcome to this special Sunday at First Baptist. Just a handful of announcements before we get started. Uh, this week is the beginning of Youth Week, and next Sunday is Youth Sunday, which means youth will be leading both services and teaching Sunday school uh, next week. Tomorrow, Baptist Women's Luncheon across the road in the Activity Building will be led by Alice Bell from Southeastern Family Violence Center. Our Lenten services this week will be at Goblin Heights on Wednesday. It appears I'm preaching for that. And with our announcements made, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to worship you. May your Holy Spirit move among us and stir us to be everything you've called us to be as the body of Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. He lived and walked among us, offering healing and compassion, and proclaiming the justice and righteousness of the kingdom of God. Jesus revealed the fullness of God's glory within him when he led several of his disciples up a mountain. There his body was transfigured and glowed with the holy light. 
The disciples were confused and afraid. But from the clouds, a voice said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Sometime after the transfiguration, a woman brought a vial of expensive perfume to Jesus, then proceeded to break it open and anoint his feet. It was a bold act of gratitude and worship. The disciples scoffed and declared that she had wasted a precious resource. But Jesus affirmed her gesture and told them she was preparing his body for burial. We, too, have much to be thankful for, and while we cannot physically anoint Christ's body to thank him, we can offer him the best of what we have in worship, in stewardship, and in service. 
As we take time to give of our resources during this hour of worship, let us follow this woman's example of boldness, of extravagance, and of gratitude. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, we pray that you would accept this offering that we receive and share today. This offering of music, of words spoken in reflection of your glory. But we would also pray, Lord, that you would receive our tithes and offerings that the message of Jesus Christ might be shared in this community and state, nation, and world. Help us to give, Lord, not out of a sense of obligation, but more out of a sense of gratitude and faith. Gratitude for what you have done in our lives and faith for what you are to do and will do through us in the lives of others. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to give. In the Christ's name we pray. Amen. She came to Jesus with her.
Days later, as Jesus knew what was to come, he gathered with his disciples during Passover for what would be their last meal together. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread, broke it, blessed it, and gave it to them, foretelling what would happen to his own body in just a few short hours. The scripture teaches us that on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gathered with his disciples and shared the meal of the Passover, a time of remembrance of God's deliverance. And upon conclusion of that meal, Jesus then took bread and broke it and blessed it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. He then took a cup and said, this is the cup of a new covenant, the cup of my blood, which is poured out for you. In each of these, he asks us to remember him as we receive them. 
This morning we come to the table to receive the bread and the cup. There are a couple of instructions about our observance of Lord's Supper today that I want you to be aware of. First, we will ask you to come forward and to receive the bread and the cup. We will receive through the process of intinction, which you will come first to the servant who is holding the bread. You will receive a piece of bread and then move to the servant with the cup and place the a portion of the bread into the cup, and then partake of both at the same time. You will also notice that the bread is a little different from what we typically use. This is a gluten-free uh, bread. We want to uh, be mindful of all of our, our brothers and sisters who may uh, deal with food allergies. So this bread is, is suitable for everyone to enjoy. Also, if you are not able to come to the table, uh, if you would and would like to receive the, the bread and the cup, please simply raise your hand and two of our servants will come to you and bring you the bread and the cup. And so I would ask now that our servants come to their places and be prepared to serve.
After the Passover meal, Jesus and his disciples went to the garden where, despite knowing the suffering his body would endure, Jesus prayed for God's will to be done. Betrayed by Judas, he was soon arrested and taken before the chief priests and scribes to stand trial. They then took Jesus to Pilate, who asked the crowd, What shall I do with him? The crowd answered, Crucify him. Then the soldiers flogged him, placed a crown of thorns on his head, and began mocking him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they led him out to the place of the skull, which is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and the disciple whom he loved. When Jesus saw them there, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother.
It was about noon, and darkness came over the whole land. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then he gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Now when the centurion who stood facing Jesus saw this, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. And when it was evening, Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb.
as they laid his body in a tomb. Jesus' friends and family thought all was lost. But thanks be to God that the story didn't end there. While we know what was to come, let us not rush too quickly to that Easter morning. As our Lenten journey continues, may we reflect on and give thanks for the great love God has for us, revealed through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world.
Though the physical body of Christ no longer dwells among us, his spirit lives in all who believe in him. Now we have become the body of Christ on earth as we continue his work together. In the words of Teresa of Avila, Christ has no body but yours. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes, you are the body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. And God's children said, Amen. I don't know that applause is the appropriate response to that beautiful music, but you have stirred our hearts today. And what I would ask that in response to this beautiful music, that you um, voice your gratitude to Tim and the choir and musicians and to Aaron and to the Handbell Choir, but let what has been stirred in you propel you to acts of kindness and mercy acknowledging that you are the hands and feet of the body of Christ in this community this day. I think that might be the most fitting response to our music today. This time I want to invite our seniors to the front. I have a special presentation for them and also a special announcement on behalf of one of them as well. They're coming forward. And Briley, I'm going to ask if you would come over here and stand beside me. No one wants to stand beside the preacher anyway, but I'm going to ask you to. Uh, this is Briley Davis. She comes today not only to receive the key as a senior um, here at uh, First Baptist Church, but she also comes today making her desire to profess her faith in Jesus Christ as her Savior and Lord known and to join the First Baptist Church upon her profession of faith. All who rejoice with me in Briley's decision for Christ this day, please say amen. amen. And that gets you into the church as well. And it's pretty neat that the day you join the church, you get the key to the church too. 
that's pretty cool. <laughs> no, here, let me have that back. <laughs> Um, now, the rest of you all come on forward, and Briley, um, Briley, I know, has talked to Doug some. We will be planning her baptism soon, I'm, I'm sure. Um, but that aside, we welcome you into the life of the church, and so I am going to ask folks to come by and greet you and welcome you. And um, I don't know if, if I can just kind of put this in the middle and, and everyone take a hold of it, um, but um, that's our, our ceremonial church key that we always present to our seniors on the Sunday before Youth Sunday. Um, our youth, not just our seniors, have already been very involved in um, kind of Youth Week almost sometimes stretches into Youth Month. Um, several of our youth attended our um, uh, March deacons meeting and are aware of how our church functions in those capacities. Um, some will be visiting in the nursing home this week and doing other ministries. They've been writing Sunday school lessons. Um, and sermons and so on. So they've already been very engaged in preparing to lead us in both worship services um, next week. So we wish you well. We thank you for the good work that you have done and will be doing this week. So, and I'm going to ask if you all just will stay right here and, and join Briley and let folks come by and greet you um, in just a moment, okay? Let's pray together. Gracious God, we bow with grateful hearts for this music today and the worship that we have had. We thank you for the bread and the cup that has been a living memorial of your sacrifice for us. I pray, Lord, that we have done more than just remembered you in this worship, that we have committed ourselves to you once again, to living for your glory, to sharing the strong, powerful, loving, glorious name of Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we do pray. Amen. <laughs> 